Hello, thank you for joining this month's Connect with Contraline session. My name is Jose Luna and I will be your facilitator for this webinar. Today we will talk about our latest release and see how Contraline 922 helps streamline operations, boost security and reduce maintenance across your environment. We have three presenters today from the Contraline support team. Drew Casas, Cody Belcher and Adrian Enriquez. We recommend going to full screen mode during this presentation by pressing the full screen button. Please note that this presentation is available via the file spot at the bottom of your screen. For any questions you may have during the presentation, please post them in the Q&A pod. We will be addressing your questions at the end of the session. Today, we'll explain and demonstrate the topics you see here regarding new ControlM Enterprise Manager Rehost Utility, new Python-based Automation API command line, and the new ControlM Agent connection to multiple ControlM servers. Afterwards, we'll take your questions during the Q&A session and give you the opportunity to provide your feedback. For our first demonstration, Drew Casas will demonstrate how to use the new ControlM Enterprise Manager Rehost Utility. Drew, please go ahead. Thank you for that introduction, Jose. Hi, everyone. As stated, my name is Drew Casas, and I will be discussing and demonstrating our new rehost utilities, EM Configure Hostname and EM Configure DB. Previously, we used the Restore Host Config utility with various options depending on whether you are rehosting an EM, its respective database, or failing over to an inactive DR environment. In version 9.0.22, these have been simplified into EM Configure Hostname and EM Configure DB. It is important to note that this utility is for the Enterprise Manager and that the Restore Host Config utility for the ControlM server has not been changed. Here you can see the relationship between the old versus the new utility based on functionality. As you can see, the rehost, dr, and alias hostname setup options have been consolidated into the EM Configure hostname utility. The reconf db option has been replaced with the EM Configure db tool. Time for a demo. Now that my production database is unavailable, I need to point my EM installation to the backup database I have set up in my dr environment. I will need to propagate this change to the local configuration files on the EM host using the EM configure DB utility. Here on the EM host, we'll confirm that it's still communicating with our prod database by checking the dbu params.dat file. Here we see it's still using prod underscore db1 for the database host name. Before running the EM configure DB utility, we'll want to confirm that all of our EM processes are stopped, including Kafka. So I'll run the stop EM dash kill Kafka command. We'll enter yes to continue. And here we see all of our components are being shut down. The stop EM utility is a new feature in 922 as well. Similar to the stop underscore all utility, it stops all EM processes, however, leaves the database still running. Now that all the processes are down, we can go ahead and run our EM configure db.sh script. Here we have defined the host parameter with the dr underscore db1, the Postgres port of 5432, EMDB, the EM user, and the password for the EMDBO user. Go ahead and run it. Here it'll verify that all components were shut down and these are the changes that it will be making in the updates for the following values. So as we see, it'll be changing the host name to drdb1. We'll go ahead and click yes, enter yes. And here we see that everything was updated successfully. Now we can double check our dbu params.dat file once again to make sure that it is connecting to the new dr database. As we can see here, drdb1 is now the host name of the database, so the configuration changes have been set. Now we'll go ahead and start the EM processes, and verify that everything comes back up now that we're connected to the new dr database. 
After giving it a bit, now let's run check all to make sure that all the components have started up successfully. There we have a good sign that the database server status is set to active and communicating with the EM components. All right, it looks like everything started up successfully and we're good to go. EM should now be working with the new database and everything else should be functional. Lastly, we'll briefly review where the logs can be found in the event that this process needs troubleshooting. We can go to the ctmem slash log slash configure folder. From here, we will go into the latest EM configure DB folder. And here we can see several backup files created by this tool in case anything needs to be restored, as well as the last two SQL EM and EMDB config app. We'll take a look at the config app. And these are the application logs created. Here you can find information on any part of the process that experienced any errors or failures. And that concludes our demo. Back to you, Jose. Thank you, Drew, for showing how to use this new Rehost utility. Our next one is about how to use the new Python-based automation API command line. We have Cody who is going to lead us through this demonstration. Cody, please go ahead. Thank you for that introduction. Today, I'll be demonstrating the new Python-based automation API CLI. The Python-based CTM CLI improves the security of the CTM CLI, allows customers to choose what version of Python to install and use, and is fully backwards compatible with existing job flows and automation API use cases. The new CLI client requires Python 3.8.4 or higher and PIP 20.1.1 or higher. We can verify the Python and PIP versions by running Python capital V and PIP capital V. If the required versions of Python and PIP are not present, upgrading the CTM CLI will not work. This is especially important to note before upgrading control and agent to 922 or higher, as this can block the agent upgrade as the Python based CTM CLI is included with this version of the agent. We can verify the version of CTM CLI that we have installed by running CTM space dash version or just CTM dash V. This shows that my CTM CLI version is 9.22.25, but using the Node.js version. I will now add an environment for the CTM CLI, and we will see that it auto updates to the Python version because the requirements are met. If we add the dash dash trace flag to the CTM CLI command, we will see detailed output, including where the version of the automation API REST server is checked to determine if any auto upgrade should be attempted. This flag is useful for troubleshooting a variety of issues. After the upgrade, the old Node.js version of the CTM CLI is kept for backwards compatibility. You should make sure that the path to the new Python based CTM CLI is the first in the path environment variable, but more on that later. I will now switch to a different user to show the process of directly installing the Python-based CTM CLI. Installing the Python-based CTM CLI requires downloading the install underscore CTM underscore CLI .py script from the Enterprise Manager, which I have already done here, and running it with the Python binary. In my environment, the location where the CTM command is installed is in the path environment variable by default. If this is not the case in your environment, or if there are multiple installs of the CTM CLI, such as the Node.js version for backwards compatibility that was mentioned earlier, you should make sure the path environment variable is updated to include the preferred CTM CLI install and that it comes before any other installs. The method to change the path environment variable will depend on your operating system and if you're doing it permanently or not. Examples for Windows and Linux are shown on this slide. On this slide, we can see some commonly asked questions about the new Python requirement for the CTM CLI. If I don't have Python, can I still use the API? 
All Automation API functionality released before version 9.0.22 will still be available. If you attempt to use functionality added after version 9.22, you will receive an error. Do I need to have Python installed when I upgrade the agent to version 9.22? For agents where Automation API CTM CLI is used, as determined by checking if the CTM CLI has environments defined, the Python requirements should be met as the agent upgrade will fail otherwise. If the CTM CLI is not used on the agent, the upgrade will proceed, but the CTM CLI will not be installed. Will Node.js be removed from the agent? Only on agents where the CTM CLI is not used. On agents where it is used, Node.js will be kept to allow for backwards compatibility. This concludes my demo. We will go back to Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Cody, for showing the new Python based automation CLA. Next up, Adrian Enriquez will demonstrate new ControlM agent connectivity to multiple ControlM servers. Adrian, please go ahead. Thank you, Jose, for that introduction. Here is what I will be demonstrating today. We are excited to announce the new agent connection to multiple ControlM servers functionality. On version 9.0.22, an agent that is connected to a self-hosted ControlM server now can also connect to an additional SaaS ControlM server. This enables you to manage and simultaneously run jobs on an agent from both ControlM servers at the same time. So why having a multi-server agent? Well, this new feature has been requested by our customers for a long time and eliminates the time needed to install, configure, and maintenance of an extra controlling agent. At the moment, it is only supported to have one agent connected to an on-prem controlling server and to a SaaS controlling server at the same time. But the ability to add more controlling servers to this setup will be possible in future versions. It is important to mention that to be able to use this new feature, your enterprise manager, your controlling server, and your controlling agent needs to be in version 9022. We also introduce a new agent utility to manage the different controlling servers that you have connected to your agent. This utility can be run in the command line with parameters or can also be run as an interactive menu. It allows you to perform actions like add, remove, list the controlling servers, and more. Now, I want to show you how you can use this utility to connect a new SaaS controlling server to an agent, and after that, I will list all the controlling servers connected to this agent. So, after we made sure that our environment is ready to add a new SaaS controlling server, the first step is to create a token for our agent. So for this, we're going to go to the configuration domain of our SaaS control end server, and we're going to go to the agents, and from the manage dropdown list, we select agent tokens. Then we click the add button, and the generate agent token menu appears. Then in the agent token name, we are going to type the name that we want. In this case, I'm going to name it test token. From the control and server drop down list, we select the SAS control and server to associate with this agent token. In this case, I'm selecting this one. If your agent doesn't have an agent tag, then by default in the agent tag field we just type admin and finally we click on generate token we copy the token to our clipboard and now on our controlling agent installation we're gonna use the new utility to manage the control and the multiple control and servers. I'm going to copy the utility into the command line. As you can see, we have option one, 
add Helix server. Here we need to paste the token that we just generated. It will ask if we want to save the new server configuration. We press yes. It will tell us that the agent needs to be shut down for this Astium to take effect. We select yes. And we just simply wait until the Astium is finished. And we see here we can see that the server was successfully added to this controlling agent. Okay, now let's list all the controlling servers connected to this controlling agent. For that, we start the agent up again. And now we can list all the controlling servers connected to it. Here we can see the list of the control M servers currently connected to this agent. If we go back to the control M server agent list, we should see the new agent. Agent is available. I also want to show you how this feature looks on the web client user interface. For example, here you can see that this particular control M agent status is available and you can also see that it's connected to these two control M servers. In the agent settings you can now also see the connection to the different control M servers and basically all the menus were changed to support multiple connection actions like recycle, ping, etc etc and this concludes our demonstration about agent connection to multiple control end servers i will hand it back to you jose thank you adrian for showing this new multi-servers feature all right everyone that concludes our session for today on behalf of drew cody and adrian and the entire connect with control m team thank you for spending time with us today we look forward to you taking advantage of features that we saw today in your environment. Stick around for the Q&A session where we will take your questions. But first, you can learn more about the BMC Education course, Control M Fundamentals Operating, by clicking the link in the link section below, or you can visit the bit.ly link you see on the screen. Your feedback shapes our future webinars. We would appreciate if you will take a moment and answer a few questions for us in the survey that you will receive later today. You can find Control M on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Links for each can be found in the links section below. You can watch previous webinars on the Control M channel on YouTube. Today's webinar will be posted there within a couple of days. Okay, let's kick off the Q&A. As a reminder, you can enter your questions on the Ask a Question section at any time. 